So we've been looking at uh, things that we can put up here in the select clause. Uh, so I, in this example, I have a uh, select of some columns, the EMPNO, salary, and bonus are just columns off of the table that we're working with, which happens to be uh, this employee table. Uh, but we also have some things that are a little bit more complex than uh, just regular columns off the table. Uh, in this example, we've got last name, concat, comma, concat, first name. So what we're doing is taking things out of two columns on the table uh, and crunching them together, concatenating them together into one column in the result set, and we're actually taking a little comma there and uh, a literal and putting it into the result. So on my table, I have two columns for last name, or one column for last name, one column for first name. In my result, I want a single column that has the name, last name, comma, first name. So this is an example of me taking something data, some data that I need that doesn't exist on the table in the way that I need it and producing it in my result set. We've done the same thing down here with this last column that we've selected. We've said salary plus bonus. Okay, so we have a salary column on the table. We have a bonus column on the table. Each of those two things stands independent of each other as far as the database is concerned. But when I, if I want to produce, you know, what's this person's total income, I can get a column in my result set over there that has salary plus bonus on it. Okay, so, and you can see I've selected the salary, the bonus, and then salary plus bonus, and you see all three of them. Now you'll notice these two columns here, the ones that I manufactured, don't have column names in the result set. So uh, we've got a column name for EMPNO, we've got a column uh, heading for salary and bonus, but the two that I made up uh, didn't end up getting uh, column headings. And the way I can do that is by renaming these columns, and in this case I've actually renamed one of the columns that's just a real column, there's EMP number, I wanted to call it EMP number instead of EMPNO, so I can do that. But more importantly here, I've taken the two columns that didn't have a name because they were contrived or, or derived from other data, and I've given them a name by using this as uh, syntax on the select. So I've said this last name concatenate to the first name. I'm going to call the whole thing name in my result set. Uh, salary plus bonus, I'm going to call it total pay in my result set. So I've just given these columns that wouldn't otherwise have a name uh, a name. And it allows me to reference them then in the result set uh, by a name that I, that I choose. Marty, you have a question? Yeah, why can't you rename it in the where clause? Okay, so Marty has noticed something kind of important here. Uh, when I do this renaming, salary plus bonus, I can't use that in the where clause. And, and a lot of people run into this, where if I want to say now where total pay is greater than 60000 or whatever I want to put there, uh, I can't reference total pay in the uh, where clause, and that's a nice segue for me. Thank you for that. If I say here where total pay is greater than 50,000, uh, I get an error. And what it has to do with is the order of processing or the order in which the database actually parses my select statement. We've looked at all six clauses of the select statement so far. You know, we've got the select, the from, the where, group by, having, and order by. So that's the order that you actually write things in. You know, what data do I want? What table does that come from? What rows do I want? Grouping and halving are all about uh, summarization of data. Order by, what order do I want the rows back in? And if I write all of these, some of these are optional, some of them are required, right? But if I write all of them, they have to be in this order. But it turns out the database actually processes them in a different order. So it actually looks at my from clause first when I send a select statement to the database. You know, what tables are you going after? It's got to know that first, even though I wrote it second. Okay. Then, which rows are we looking at? It processes your where clause. Okay. Then it does any grouping. Then it comes back and does the select, and then it does order by. So what you can see here is these columns that I've renamed in the select, the actual parser that's looking at this code doesn't actually look at that select until close to the end of the process. So if I say where total pay is greater than 50,000, it gets to this where clause pretty early in the process and says, I don't know what total pay is. Okay, we've defined that up in the select, which doesn't get processed till later. It looks like it gets processed because it's at the top, right? But I can't actually use it in a where clause. Now I can say order by total pay because I renamed it in the select, but order by is the thing that actually gets processed last in the entire um, process of parsing my SQL. Uh, so if I 
rename a column up here, I can say order by that column, but I can't use it really anywhere else in the select statement. That's a very good question. That's one thing a lot of people run into uh, when they're dealing with uh, writing these queries. Is what, it seems like I can't always reuse, I can sometimes reuse things that I renamed and I can't always. And it has to do with this physical order of processing. Okay. We can also then, uh, instead of uh, saying where total pay is greater than 50000 I can say where salary plus bonus is greater than 50000 I have to repeat this whole expression. Now, there's some reasons you may or may not want to do this. Okay. this putting this expression in the where clause really limits the ability of the database to use indexes uh, to retrieve that result. But if this is what I need, this is really the only way to write it, uh, I have to repeat that entire expression. I can't refer to just the renamed column.